Hello and welcome to this tutorial about learning how to use the newer Wacom Pressure Curve Tool. If anybody remembers in the past, the older Pressure Curve Tool was pretty ugly and it didn't really adjust the pressure that everybody would like to have. Instead of it being able to slide from max pressure on, it usually did this ugly bendy curve. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to describe it. And it didn't really well, you know, even if you tried to press hard, it would still it still took a lot of force. Well, now in the new one, and I'm going to show you the latest driver is for the Intuos 5 6.3.0-2. So, to get the latest driver, you of course have to go to your Wacom site, and it may depend on which region you're in and you would go to product drivers of course and select your tablet model in your operating system. So the latest one that they have is actually 6.20W5 since January 12th. At least for the Intuos 4. This is more for the Intuos 5 Touch and since I use both tablets uh, that's why I got the latest driver. Unfortunately for Cy Paint, uh it'll only recognize the very first tablet that you installed with pressure sensitivity, any other tablet after that, it, it just doesn't work very well. So, okay, let's start going on with uh, why the pressure curve tool in the new one is much better. And I'll pop it up now. And you'll notice that you now have three areas that you can adjust. The click threshold, which detects how much, uh, immediate detection of how much force you apply to your tablet. So that's kind of good for beginning strokes. Then you have the sensitivity. It's how uh, sensitive it's going to be detecting your levels and the max pressure. Now what everybody thought was the greatest idea is that, oh, okay, now I can just adjust the max pressure and it's all good. Which for an Intuos 3 and I believe older tablets, this is not so bad because there's only about 1,024 levels of pressure sensitivity. On the other hand, tablets like the Intuos 4, 5, and the Cintiqs that also use 2,048 levels of pressure, this isn't such a great idea, and I'll demonstrate why. Let's open up a program like Open Canvas. Now, in Open Canvas, it's pretty easy to ink in. It's very simple, and I actually recommend this kind of program to beginners because it takes out most of the bells and whistles that beginners get obsessed with, with like lens flare and other stupid uh, effects and doesn't teach the person the foundations of painting. But when you want to ink, you generally want to take the settings of the pen and you want to take this slider, the top one, and move it all the way over to the left so that the minimum size is zero and then you can adjust accordingly for the bottom slider. For this demonstration, I'm going to make it a little bit larger than what I would use. And I have it at 19 pixels. And I'm disabling the transparency. By default, it's usually enabled. So we'll go with the line. And using the lightest pressure, you'll notice that the stroke is pretty round. It, you know, you just barely try touching the tablet and you'll notice that you get this really blobby round stroke and it's like okay that's kind of terrible so the old way was to adjust this thing and I just don't like messing with it because it's hard to put back to default so this is where the new Wacom pressure curve tool comes in handy so bringing this up let me hit OK for a second okay now you can select it for a program basis. Like if you just want a certain kind of pressure for your open canvas, you can do that. And you can see I've also have shortcuts for Psi and so forth. So you select your tablet, make sure you have the grip pen selected, and then the program you want to adjust the pressure curve tool. So what you want to do with the, the more sensitive tablets is you want to adjust the output over to the right. Even though that uh, it's got 2,000 48 levels of pressure sensitivity, it's not necessarily a great thing with the older programs that haven't really adjusted to this. So, slide it over to the right. I usually leave the max pressure alone and just do a few strokes just for fun, just for kicks, or just to see how it looks basically. 
and hit OK. And the other thing you also want to do, just for the sake of the tablet, let's see if I double click it, is the tablet has the name and then the mode. There's standard and recognition data, and I prefer recognition data because it, it sends out, you know, more uh, data to whatever program you're using. So now I'm going to clear this out. And let's go back to the pen and select black. And now when I do a light stroke, you can see more tapered edges. Now you can adjust the sensitivity if you don't feel that the line is quite right, which of course was the middle slider. When you go over to customize, you can pull it down or up. Wait a few seconds for it to kind of kick in and then, you know, go back and and for me now it's responding a lot better. So you can get a decent stroke. The only thing I noticed though is that it's hard to get a tapered end on on this on open canvas. Even though if you go a little bit slower, you can kind of get like a better line if you end up just taking your time with the stroke and a lot of people don't cuz they're afraid of, you know, it looking bad if you're too shaky. So now let's go to uh, Easy Paint. Well, let's start with Corel Paint. Well, now I gotta make a decision. Okay, let's start with Easy Paint Tool Sci. And it jumped over because I need to get used to working on two monitors and its resolution. Okay, with Easy Paint Tool Sci, I'm gonna reset the stabilizer to zero, and I'm gonna make my stroke and for the most part it's pretty decent it doesn't look too bad and but again you know you get these little rounded edges which eh, isn't the greatest thing so let me select all and get rid of this now adjusting the stabilizer is an option and immediately you'll notice the improvement in the stroke because it's sending like some pro uh, processing information to make the strokes look better because it's also kind of vector and of course you can use the S7 uh, setting like the biased and you can get great great lines but at a cost of lag and some people really don't like that so to get a happy medium here let me select all and get rid of this canvas here You want to go back to your Wacom tablet properties, and I'm going to re I'm going to adjust this down to seven again. Seven, nine. That's usually good without sacrificing uh, performance. So, again, once I have this open, it's just basically the same thing as I did with the open canvas. I just move this over, create a straight line, check a few strokes just to see, and we're good to go. And see, now I haven't sacrificed performance and I just get a, a really responsive line. It's like you can see how thin it is. And it's in the middle setting, so it's great. And I don't believe Psy can detect 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity, so who cares? You're, you're, you're going to be good with this. Okay, so. Now let's go to Corel Painter. And yes, I know, I have a very big soft spot for Painter, despite all of its bugs. But I wanted to talk about why it's a lot better than a lot of other programs where you have to use the Wacom Pressure Tool. Painter always came with its own uh, pre uh, brush tracking. So, in this case we're going to use the Scratch Port Tool, because it's usually like one of the best inking tools. The other one is a modified cover pencil. and Unfortunately, I don't have my uh, custom brushes, which I'll probably get into later, but I haven't imported them into my desktop since I recently just started up using my desktop again. So anyway, with Painter, you know, make a nice line, a tapered line, pretty easy, just almost right out of the box. And even if it doesn't feel great, what you want to do is, is you'll go to Edit, Preferences, and then you go to brush tracking 
and you just make a few quick strokes. Sometimes I make like six or seven just to get into the habit of it, picking up how I how I draw. And once that's done, usually you'll um, immediately notice that the the line quality is a lot better. So let's clear this. And the other great thing about Painter is that you can actually adjust it per brush basis. If you go over to Window and you bring out the brush control panels or Control B, you'll get this huge in, uh, information overload with uh, panels. But on the other hand, what you want to uh, on the other hand, there's a lot of uh, good things in those panels, but you just got to be a little bit patient. So. In this case, you can see that I have enabled brush calibration, which means that it will um, allow me to change the stroke or uh, my brush preferences per brush basis. So if I don't like the settings of this in the artist oils or real watercolor, I can, you know, change change it per brush basis. So I think Painter is superior in doing this because it, it just makes it a lot less hassle than me trying to remember, oh, okay, let's see the pressure curve tool and walk them in before you had to manually edit it to get something nice. S and sometimes it messes with your other programs. So in a way, this is a fairly good thing to have. Now, let's talk about Photoshop. And you can see my setup here, and I just wanted to give like a short shout out for uh, this really cool color wheel that I found. It's uh, from Cooler Russ and I thought I'd show you where you can pick it up at coolerus.com. Right now it's in beta but it has some really nice features that you can change uh, the kind of color selection you're doing like complementary. Uh, and as you can see the sliders are going and selecting through complement in other color modes so it's great it's free right now try it out beta test it tell everybody about the bugs uh, I'm sure they're really happy to see the feedback so anyway now that we're done playing with this really nifty uh, color wheel let's get back to the problem with Photoshop now I'm gonna bring out the brush commands and most people will tell you that okay to get this really the tapered line that everybody generally uses you would go to shape dynamics and uh, you can or cannot or don't have to enable smoothing but we'll talk about shape dynamics and then basically you just want to change the minimum diameter to zero size jitter zero and put the control at pen pressure so once you have that set you make a stroke it's almost like open canvas and it also in windows it does this really obnoxious shoelace bug see if you notice the end of the stroke looks like well a shoelace and that's usually because of the smoothing that it does it does it less often if you take it off but it's kinda gross looking so not only that, as you notice, this, these strokes are like too hard, too round, and they just start off way too forceful. And before anybody thinks that I just hate Photoshop, I actually still like it. It's just not my favorite program anymore. And I've used it for years, but there's just certain things that, that just bug me enough to switch to a different program for painting. But you know for changing layers and stuff and you know layer modes and using brushes in a certain method I I'll give it to them and the stability is also great but anyway here's the problem now normally it's just a matter of adding Photoshop just like I would with Psy customize move over and especially if you have tablet shortcuts where you want to use the alt tool as an eyedropper for example it would be the solution so as you can see I've changed it but really it's just not happening for the most part it's happening on the end 
but it's still not happening on the beginning as much even though like maybe three or four strokes it takes a while to improve so the unfortunate thing you have to do is delete this yep bye bye Photoshop customize always make sure it's at default because if you mess with the setting it still doesn't read very well in Photoshop I don't know what's going on with their the software so I hit OK and now just wait a few seconds and immediately I get the stroke I wanted it's both ends are tapering so it's kinda crazy it's a, it's a bug I've talked to others about it and it's just very strange but anyway I hope that explaining the pressure I've been able to explain the pressure curve tool a little bit to people and uh, how to use it especially if you're using the newer tablets and it seems like your strokes are just coming down too hard and you feel like you're you know heavy-handed even though you're not really applying that much pressure so thank you for watching and I hope that it helps somebody out